Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Wired for Hybrid. We are in August, August 3rd, to be exact, recording. Um, we're covering July, and we've lately been more on the later the month or very early the next month, but we still call it the July edition because updates come up until the last week of July or the last week of the month, so we don't want to miss anything. And that's why we're a little bit, um, even though publishing in August, but it still covers July. How you doing, Michael? I am doing awesome. How about yourself? I'm great. Just uh, had a nice conference a couple of weeks ago at, at uh, Tech Mentor in uh, Microsoft HQ. Um, it very was cool. great to be back with people again. I'm, I'm always very happy to be that. How about you? What have you been working on? Yeah, I just got back from vacation. And so I've actually been working on this is like a year or so in the works. Uh, when I came on board last year, I got um, ownership for a document that covers our latency, round trip latency between uh, certain Azure regions. Okay. And it doesn't cover every region. So it's specific because we have to set up these specific networkings and it works for yep. different tools. Long story short, it's been hard to get the data and also to put it into a proper framework because previously they put it into this basically Excel spreadsheet and we took a screenshot of that and we put it in docs. With our growth, we've got to the point where it's really, really difficult to do that. So we were trying to figure out how to do it. And I came up with what I think is a great way to visualize it by yep. using tabs in the doc so you can choose which of the big geographic regions like US or Asia, APAC, those sorts of things. And then you can go down to sub tabs that cover all of the, you know, the regions within there. And I know that's been super important for teammates and customers, especially in Europe, because there's been a, you know, with all the growth and everything, there's been a lot of capacity issues. So people are looking for, okay, where am I going to put that other region? Which ones am I going to go to? Am I going to have the, the speeds that I want? So down in the comments or down in the uh, show notes, we're going to have a link to that article. I would love to hear your feedback on whether, you know, this format works for you. If yep. you have any comments, that sort of thing. This is a doc that, you know, I've invested a huge amount of time in and people effort to get this out for everybody. So I hope everybody finds it useful. And as we've mentioned in previous episodes, if you find something in a document that you think, hmm, this is a typo, this is wrong, uh, this needs to be clarified, upper right corner of your browser, there's a little pencil in there in the doc. Just click on that and tell us about that. Uh, all our documentation is open sourced and we get to review and uh, update it really quickly as opposed to the six to eight months it used to take uh, before we uh, open sourced it. Back when we had 27 different areas for content. Yes, yes, <laughs> of course. And all right, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> how about we get going for this month? So let's uh, try to make this episode a little uh, Absolutely. Uh, reasonably long. Absolutely. So right, the so first, what do you one, first one we got up is, so we got, uh, just went out for general availability a while back, uh, mid-July. Azure Cross Region Load Balancer is now generally available. So okay. what you get with Cross Region Load Balancer, and sometimes you'll see this mentioned as global load balancer, because that's really what it is, is it's a global load balancer. So what it enables you to do is geo-redundant HA scenarios for your workloads. Yeah. So basically what gets created, we have different home regions around the world, like West US, that you have a static AnyCast global IP address that doesn't change 
assigned mm -hmm. for your global load balancing. And then behind that, you have partner regions that connect to those. Yeah. So, you know, let's say you are sitting in Seattle and you hit your global uh, cross-region load balancer. It's going to look for the closest location for you. And let's just say in this scenario, we've got a web app that we are load balancing between one of the data regions in Europe and West US. Of course, it's going to send you to West US. But the nice thing about this is that for many of those companies that are global, you now have a way to create one and entry point yep. that you can put all of your load balancers from all the different regions in. And then it algorithmically determines between the user and where they enter and all of that sends them to the correct region. And then of course, all of that traffic is going to go on the Azure backend. So you're going to have lower latency because you're going through that, that high speed backend that we use for all of our internal networking between regions. Okay. Well, there's a couple of things here. Um, one, I wonder how this compares to, let's say, a front door uh, implementation. And two, I think we're going to have that answer because I think we've been talking to the PM on that one to do a deep dive on this. We Correct? absolutely have. We are going to have Mahip from the load balancing team. He's been heading up cross-region load balancer. I work with him on a daily basis. And he's going to come in. And in a couple of weeks, we're going to have a deep dive into cross-region load balancer. So just like we did with um, Azure Virtual Network Manager and Azure Front Door, we're yep. going to deep dive into that. And then we've got some other really cool deep dives. Um, like you and I were talking about, we knew it was just a matter of getting some of these out and getting some people talking about it. Now and getting the audience to appreciate yep. them and, and liking them. So Absolutely. like and subscribe. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, I will let him answer that question. Um, the big TLDR, I think, is because F, uh, Front Door is more of a distribution network. Yeah. Where, you know, it's it's putting the content in multiple areas and distributing it. I probably, Dong's going to probably hit me for that because it was probably a terrible act um, analogy. But, you know, this is, load balancing as opposed to content you know, distributing content distribution that sort yeah. of thing all right well we'll make sure to ask uh in the deep dive and uh, get all of those answers for you so that it's clear as crystal awesome so right. what do you got for us okay so do you want to encrypt like it's 1999 yes oh wait really? that's the wrong answer that's no, I do answer. not. Yes. I want to encrypt uh, like it's 20, 23, or, Yes. Uh, but as you know, uh, browsers are built and communication on a network uh, is built using the TLS policy. TLS policy up to now have been kind of like not stagnant, but they've been pretty much the same. And uh, 1.0, which is still in use, uh, and I don't know why, uh, it's from 1999. Like encrypt like it's 1999. TLS 1.1 is from 2006. We are now in 2023. Yes. So we are now uh, basically forcing anybody to uh, go up because the TLS policy for Azure Application Gateway. And I did see a tweet from our friend... Uh, Jeff Woolsey saying that there are also the significant changes in the TLS policies for Windows servers uh, is now being locked to a minimum of TLS 1.2. And that's coming up very, very shortly. Very cool. Uh, so now we're going to uh, not basically force uh, the communication or the, the TLS configuration, the deployment of application gateway to be 
And I believe it's like a very specific policy, the uh, app gateway, SSL policy, blah, 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 uh, will be forced or a minimum of TLS 1.2. Nice. So if you're 1.2 already, you're good. If you're 1.2 or 1.3, even better. If you're 1.0, uh, you're parting really like it's 1999 and you need to get up to date. Yes, absolutely. So that was not a uh, huge announcement in terms of added services, but it is a good announcement uh, in terms of making sure that your environment is secure and that uh, you uh, are having an experience for your customers that is uh, secure. Absolutely. And in this day and age, security really is job number one. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are in the business, is that yeah. if you're not thinking about security right up there with the implementation of whatever you're doing, um, you're, it's not a matter of if you get hacked, it's going to be when. But yeah. you want to make it as hard as possible. So this is a great way for companies to just, you know, get and, with the program. I just, yeah, I just had my my demo subscription uh, in Azure kind of reviewed and I've got an email. I have a bunch of stuff I need to address. Because, you know, when you're in a demo situation, you put like passwords like password one, two, three or... Like stupid stuff like that that you want to do because it's a demo. There's no actual data there. Yeah. Well, my demo environment is still because uh, it's live and it's in Azure. It uh, got reviewed and I have a uh, laundry list of things to go and fix in mine. Um, so I'm thinking I might actually take that opportunity to fix them, but also to do kind of like a blog post slash video on why these things are important. And uh, so if you are running some of these things in your own subscription, maybe you need to deal with them. For sure, for sure. Yep. What's your second item? So now with Azure Traffic Manager, yep. which allows you to be able to ma manage your traffic going, going you know, to your Azure resources, has now released to general availability, mm -hmm. the ability to always serve your Azure Traffic Manager traffic that's going in. So by default, health policies right. and you know the endpoints those use, those are on by default. So it's always looking to check the health of the backend points that are being used through Traffic Manager. So yeah. this allows you to always serve so to skip by those and when i was reading through this doing some i was like why would why you want would, to do that why would i want to do that the reason is is there are companies yep. that are utilizing third-party health monitors that they're bringing those okay. in they're connecting them in and maybe they provide additional stuff that we're not able to that we currently don't have, who knows? Mm -hmm. All I know is that's the big reason for this is that it allows companies to still use Traffic Manager to their resources, bring in that third-party app. Maybe it, it's a maybe it's a network virtual appliance. Who knows? But allows okay. you to bypass all of those health policies so that that third-party monitoring can work. So this is not designed as a oh I want to make sure my people get to my website. So I'm just going to turn this on and just let anything come through. No, that's not what's designed here. It's, it's specifically, you have to specifically turn it on through the health check. And it's for when you're using that third party to connect in. Okay. So if I to get, let me know if I get this right. Always serves basically just turns off the default health check probes so that you can rely on the third party one to actually say whether or not that endpoint is healthy or not. Correct. Okay. So here is one caveat with this is still, you still have to build the probe. Yes. You turn it to always serve and you're still going to get a charge for a basic health check as part of a traffic manager. 
So, you know, there, those are a couple things that, of course, are in the documentation that we have down below. It's all on how you set up that check with the third party. Yep. Okay, perfect. Other than that, you got anything else? Actually, I have one because... Uh, this, this is basically all of the GA announcements uh, for July. Uh, considering we're, what, three months from, uh, or two and a half months from Ignite, we're going to see a bit of a, a slowdown in GA announcements because everybody wants to ride that big Ignite wave. Uh, but there was one preview that became available uh, late in July that has been something that's been asked many, 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 many times yep. uh, from community members and also from companies that I've been uh, talking to, which is, it is now in public preview. Uh, it's an early public preview, so you have to uh, basically fill out a form and apply to get uh, rolled into the public preview, but it's for Azure, uh, Azure Virtual Network Encryption. So it's encryption between resources within a virtual network in Azure. Uh, that includes uh, regionally and globally through peered virtual networks, but that enhances how you can, the existing uh, encryption and transit capabilities of Azure. So basically you have end-to-end uh, -end encryption on virtual network within Azure. It's still a preview, so there are, things may change. So I'm trying to find out um, whether or not it it's, has a model where you can bring your own keys, or bring your own certificates, and so on. We don't have all that information. It just came uh, open for preview. Uh, the link will be down here if you want to apply, if you want to test it. Uh, and, of course, it may change, but this is very, very promising, and uh, I thought it would be a good idea to let you know about this. Absolutely. And, you know, I actually started on doing the docs for virtual network, and then we kind of had some swap ups in my team and I got pulled off it and went to some other places. But yeah, it's good. It, I, it's something that our customers have been asking for forever. I've heard about it. I know you hear it about it all the time. Yep. And, you know, it's been a long time coming but we can definitely see that light at the end of the tunnel. So it's going to be pretty exciting stuff. And I think, you know, I may know some people that know some people that. I'm maybe sure we can approach for a deep dive, maybe. Absolutely. Maybe. You know, I think they'd absolutely love to get. Yeah. Us talking about that. Yeah. So I will keep you in. We'll keep you posted as the virtual network encryption uh, as that goes through its specific paces. But yeah, that's a great call out. And, you know, we normally focus on the GA stuff, which I think is important because that's what you want to use in production. But yeah. it's always good. We, we always want to keep you your eye on what's coming down the road that you might be able to look for. And also uh, something like this is something chances are in your organization, you've been thinking about this. Yeah. And you've been asking for it for so long. So yeah. we figured we'd give you a little heads up and uh, go and sign up for the preview because the more people preview it, the more we get telemetry out of it, then the more we can fix issues uh, if they are any. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. So keep an eye out for this channel. Uh, as uh, we mentioned, we have several, I believe, deep dives that are in planning stages. Some that are going to be done, as Michael mentioned, in a couple of weeks, uh, hopefully recording. Uh, some that are like a month or a month and a half out. Uh, but we have some really cool stuff coming. And if you have suggestion on what you want to see for deep dives please let us know in the comments below. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, Mike, it's been uh, almost 20 minutes. With uh, that being said, uh, thank you very much. Are you going back on vacation or are you uh, back to work for good now? I'm back to work for good, though I am going to see some of the Tech Ed beer crew up in Minneapolis this weekend. So I'm going Ooh. to see Sean and Chad and and Mike and Eric and Glenn and some of the other guys and Neil. And uh, so we'll you know, have a good time. We're going to a twins game. Um, we'll probably talk, 
talk shop. I want to talk to Neil because he's his company just went all Azure. So, uh, so um, maybe you get them to spread the word about the hybrid and uh, absolutely, hybrid. absolutely. I'll hand out business cards. We still have those. I I might have one of my old one logos that uh i'm looking around my desk to see if i have any i don't think i have any but who knows you know, i have virtual ones so if you want us hit us up anyway awesome uh, that being said thank you so much michael and thank you for watching uh wired for hybrid and we'll see you next month cheers cheers